I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulent plants and how to use them in gardens, landscapes, and containers. In this video, I'll show you numerous succulents with Fibonacci spirals. Once you realize that some of the plants in your garden or potted collection have Fibonacci spirals, I'll bet you'll start seeing them everywhere. But first, exactly what is a Fibonacci spiral? It's a pattern often seen in the natural world, but can be easy to overlook or taken for granted. You've likely seen Fibonacci spirals in the centers of sunflowers, pine cones, artichokes, and even photos of hurricanes and galaxies. They're also in the leaf arrangements of many cacti and succulents. What you're seeing is called, in botany, spiral phyllotaxis. It's when leaves along a plant stem are arranged in the numerical sequence first described by Leonardo Fibonacci, a 12th century Italian mathematician. The Fibonacci sequence is one of the most famous formulas in mathematics. I'm a horticulturist and not a mathematician, but understanding a bit about the Fibonacci sequence has helped my awareness of what I like about succulents. It's actually pretty simple. Each number in the sequence is the sum of the two numbers that preceded it. One way to explain it is to draw on graph paper squares, each with sides that are successive Fibonacci numbers. This also illustrates what's known in art and architecture as the golden ratio. We'll go back to succulents in a moment, but I can't resist showing you a perceived golden ratio in the Mona Lisa. Whether this was Leonardo da Vinci's intent is unknown. Skeptics say if you move the golden ratio around any painting, it'll fit. Even so, artists and architects routinely consider the golden ratio when designing something. You may use it yourself without knowing you're doing so when composing or cropping a photo. It's called the rule of thirds. The concept is you can make a photo more pleasing to the eye by placing its subject in the left or right third of an image, leaving the other two sides more open. The website expertphotography.com calls the golden ratio or Fibonacci spiral a compositional tool that gives images a sense of harmony and leads the viewer's eyes around an image in a balanced way. This eye-catching display of Echeverias is by HGTV host and landscape designer Mike Pyle. Massachusetts graphic designer Jonathan Cleveland says of the Golden Ratio, overall, it's an interesting way to look at great design through a mathematical lens. Why do plants have spiral leaf arrangements? What purpose does it serve? It's certainly practical for succulents. A spiral of leaves enables rain to funnel down to roots and keeps upper leaves from shading lower ones. However, what's not so obvious is why Fibonacci spirals strike humans as pleasing to look at and fascinating to discover. I'm convinced that having spiral leaf formations strongly contributes to the popularity of succulents. The most popular ones, those that, when posted on social media, get the most likes, have Fibonacci spirals. It comes down to aesthetics, which is very subjective. Perhaps you, like me, gravitate to the unadorned simplicity of spirals. Take Echeverias, for example. When I ask people if they like Echeverias with bumpy leaves, some do, some don't. I like the weirdness and irregular variations of the bumps, but I prefer Echeverias with tight overlapping leaves, like this one. No wonder Echeveria raindrops is so popular. It offers the best of both. I like agaves with leaves that have a crisp geometry like this Queen Victoria agave, compared to agaves like century plants that are so big I can't see into their centers. I wonder if you feel the same as I do about agave cornelius. This cultivar has yellow and green stripes and leaves with wavy edges. It's colorful, odd, and interesting, 
But those marginal ripples hide the very reason most of us like agaves, their geometric leaf arrangements. When looking for spirals, you'll notice them best when looking at the top of the plant down its stem or looking at the face of a rosette straight on. Perhaps the most famous succulent for its Fibonacci sequence is aptly named spiral aloe, aloe polyphylla. It's tricky to grow, making it the holy grail of succulents. Other aloes will have leaves that follow the Fibonacci sequence, but the longer and narrower the leaf, the less noticeable the spiral. The buds of aloe flowers also have a Fibonacci pattern. Don't these look like little pine cones? These are flowers still in bud of aloe distans. Medusa euphorbias are known for stems radiating from a flat spiral that resembles the center of a sunflower. No two are exactly alike, and seldom do you find one that's perfect. Not surprisingly, those with large centers are most in demand. The spines of spherical cacti often follow the Fibonacci sequence, and when a spiral of spines is prominent, I prefer the plants out of bloom. Flowers, at least for me, take attention away from the pattern. Four is not a Fibonacci number. Very few flowers have four petals. Subliminally, we expect flowers to have five, eight, thirteen, or more overlapping petals, and when they don't, it's just not quite right. Go to my website to see more succulents that exhibit Fibonacci spirals. I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. My goal is to share and celebrate the beauty of succulents and to inspire you to enjoy using the plants in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living spaces. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.